What is going on, everyone? Um, Carl and I are here today for uh, do commentary over um, our first ever draft league finals. Uh, this is season one that we actually hosted this year over the last what, like three months or so? Something like that. It was five rounds of Swiss and then a month for the playoffs or quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals to get done. So yeah, it, about so two about two months. So um, this is going to be between Jiggly Dreams and Zeno Verto. Um, this is Jiggly Dreams fi- um, video, right? He sent this in? Yeah, Jiggly Dreams was the one who recorded it for us. Which he, he didn't have to do that, but we appreciate it all the same. Oh, yeah. It, it adds just extra content, man. Yeah. Uh, I know a couple of people in the draft league picked up their own capture cards at like the very tail end. So this is just so one of those that one, we were able one to One of many coming up eventually that we'll have more videos next week. Oh, yeah. Time. <laughs> so uh, next week, well, I believe we're cutting off next week for signups for season two of draft league. So draft would probably be the week after and then week one about three weeks out so somewhere in there expect some more some more of this in the near future and we will just jump right in yeah cool cool so i have no idea what to expect i have no idea who brought what i actually couldn't even tell you who who drafted what at this point uh i know (laughs) xenon has cinderace real boom i know that yeah because i played him Week five, which is when they were like became legal, mm-hmm. it was like, huh? Well, I don't know how to beat these. So well, I planned, there's, there's I planned for team. Cinderace, and he did not bring Cinderace, <laughs> and I got beat. <laughs> so maybe get started here. Hopefully, there we go. Um, I don't think I. I can't remember if I played Jiggly Dreams this this season or not. I don't remember. I think I did. I think I did very early on. So this is... I, I know I played Zeno at 4... I, I was 3-1 and one at the time. He was 4-0. Oh, mm-hmm. um, and I got punked way hard that week. Um, he plays Draft League very well. Yep. Researches what they're doing and is able to figure it out and be able to it's really. I haven't got to see this. Before. I haven't either. This is sweet. <laughs> ah, this is cool. Okay, so we. This is the uh, first time we got to see the new uh, team select thing for uh, for uh, just ranked battles in general. So we have Aromatis, Gothitelle, Tora Cat, Haxorus, Rotom, Excavalier, and Zeno is bringing Bisharp, Rotom, Wash, Gengar, Mantine. Yeah. <laughs> Clefairy, and we do see that Cinderace. No real boom this time around, which makes sense, I guess. Uh, Toracat's a pretty good answer to real boom, just in general. Uh, real boom has high base defense and high HP, but special defense is kind of lacking unless you run assault vest. And Toracat is normally special attacking if it does any kind of damage at all. So, Colberberry is dark berry. Colber is see the darker ghost. It's one of those two. I can't remember which one. <laughs> those are Gothitelle's only weaknesses, aren't they? Bug. I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I believe it is... Culver is the ghost berry. No, Kasib is the ghost berry, so Culver must be the dark berry. Okay. I was going to pull it up just to verify. Yeah, double check for me. Uh, unfortunately, we don't get to see Z- uh, Zeno's items here, which but I could tell you from... It is dark berry. Okay. So, just just confirming that for my own sake. And game jumping in, game in one. here. Game one, exciting. Well, let's see what we got on the ballot here as our leads, because this is going to be... It's going to be nice seeing everybody in their dojo uniform, too. Oh, yeah, because... Uh, well, I changed out of mine. So. <laughs> I, I finally changed back out of mine. All right, um, so... Because air balloon. We have Cinderace... Gengar against Hexorus Gothitelle. I'm assuming this is Shadow Tag Gothitelle, which does not particularly line up well against this Gengar on the other side. No, it does not. Uh, it looks like we're going for a Psy Shock into Gengar and then 
going big Haxorus here and trying to take out the Cinderace. It, it makes sense to go for the max Wormwind here. Just because Cinderace is going to be faster. So yeah. you're going to live this first hit, hopefully. I can't, I can't imagine you don't because Cinderace doesn't have anything that's super effective against you. Right? I can't think of anything off the top of my head. No, they can become steel type and whatnot, but and resist it, and resist but, it. But that's then they're still minus one, and they're big, and they're steel type, and you don't really care. Mm-hmm. I I think it looks like we don't have Dynamax on the we other side. We do not side. go big Cinderace here, so it's just big Haxorus. So Cinderace is definitely going to take this hit, not particularly well. Cinderace is not known for its bulk. Cinderace can still U-turn out. That oh. is an option. Cinderace can U-turn Can in. it U-turn through Shadow Peg? Turn to Shadow Peg. Helping Hand? <laughs> oh! <laughs> that is This cute. is... That's some tech I've never seen before. This Gengar going for the Sledge Bomb into this uh, Gothitelle. Helping Interesting hand. to see uh, Sledge Bomb there and not... Not a Shadow Ball. Maybe we don't have Shadow Ball. Well, we know we're Air Balloon, so I can't. I can't imagine we wouldn't have Shadow Ball. It looks like we're just going to potentially pick up the double KO here. Oh, just short, just short of the KO. But Gothitelle is moderately hurt. Probably, I could see Gengar wanting to target it down just to get it out. Um, and if so, going for the protect there would be. Great. Okay, so Max Wormwind isn't that good now. Not particularly. Our one stab Dynamax attack is actually kind of bad. I believe we have close combat, though. We have a Max Knuckle, so we can hit this Bisharp as long as no nothing weird happens here. Notably, the Bisharp lines up really well against this uh, Gothitelle as well, because our only damaging move is Psyshock, yeah. which we're immune to. So if, if this Bisharp is Sash... We could see it go down to Sash and pick up the KO on... Are on we the seeing Gothitelle. a big Bisharp? I can't imagine we're Dynamaxing the Gengar. Not right. when it's at so low health. I've seen crazier people do crazier things. We um, do, do in fact, see the Bisharp coming out. So, what do we expect this Bisharp to do here? Like, we get Max Steel, Max Dark... Uh, we have Max Airstream? Do we get Airstream from... Like air aerial, slash, I think it, like, I think it gets aerial ace, aerial. which is so that would be. That was okay. a very strong uh, move out of Gengar into that Haxorus. Is that another sludge bomb? I think that was another sludge bomb. By sharp reducing the damage from the max knuckle with its berry here. If you notice, uh, it would not have would not have been enough to knock it out anyway. No, it'd be close. It, it would have definitely put it down into into red, but it is not enough. To and pick now this Gothitelle's gone. Mm-hmm. And we're going to get that defense boost, which is great in the face of this Haxorus trying to boost itself. So yep. maybe... Do we go for another Max Knuckle here? Or do we just go for the Max Quake to pick up the special defense boost? Um, That's a good question here. Especially in the face of the Gengar, I don't hate going for uh, going for the special defense boost. The, the problem with that is... That Gengar is going to hit us first anyway, so that special defense boost means nothing. True, true. Um, they could well, have... with Rotom being out, that's not the case, because we know this Rotom is Scarf. Yeah, th this Rotom is insanely fast. What if the Gengar is Scarf, and that's why it was Sledge Bomb before? It could be. That could be. Oh, that... no, it's Everlin. 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 Oh, yeah, Everlin. yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we know we this. Know that. <laughs> it, we, we, we saw the balloon pop. Yeah. How much better would Air Balloon be if it didn't tell you it was there? Uh, if you set it up correctly, it doesn't tell you it's there. Really? I did not know that. How does that work? Uh, if it's in the lead, it will tell you it's there. But if you, like, bring it out afterwards, it won't. I did not know that. Yeah. That's really... I found that out on Showdown. <laughs> Maybe Showdown's just weird. No. Oh, you No, I, it. I read it. I read it. <laughs> I, I just found that out. I read up on, like, why it did that, and that's how it works. That's how it's coded. That's really weird. Here's the Clefairy to line up friend guard with this Bisharp here. Already at plus one defense and... And now we have friend guard too, so it's just gonna really, really just not... Like, this Haxorus is just gonna look at it. Yeah, this, like, this Haxorus can't really do anything now. Especially, you know, we are plus one, but that doesn't really matter. 
We got Iron Tail to maybe hit this Clefairy, but that's personally I I like the I like going for the the pick the like doubling into Clefairy here and just trying to because the Bisharp's last turn of Dynamax's this turn. Going to Iron Tail into the Bisharp. Clefairy get ally switch? Clefairy gets uh, follow me, so I think that... Oh, we swapped back. Got four seconds. Okay, so it looks like we're Thunderbolting Bisharp, Iron Tail, hopefully hitting this Clefairy. We and are going to see the follow me. Follow so me comes out. both of these attacks are going to, going to go into this Clefairy. This Thunderbolt should do pretty decent damage. Mm -hmm. And then significantly, Iron Tail... Significantly less than Iron Tail I should thought. pick up the KO here. Yeah. It should, and it does. So that... We have 1v3 now, but this but this uh, Bisharp is going to go plus 2 on special defense. On, I mean, on defense. Picking up the KO on the Haxorus there is pretty, pretty that's big, important. too. Yeah, that's super important. This uh, this Rotom is now locked into Thunderbolt. Which is which is fine. Uh, notably, this Excavalier does have Drill Run, so we can still hit this super effectively. We have X-Scissor. I, I believe it was X-Scissor I saw. Which will uh -huh. hit neutrally. Steel resist bug, right? It does. Yes. Okay, cool. Thank you, game, for telling me how to do this. <laughs> so, by sharp, I don't know if by sharp could hit this escavalier like at all. And if so, not not for anything decent. No. Sucker punch the Rotom. Does, does just it? over half. Yeah. That's notable. But it's gonna go down to Thunderbolt pretty easily here. Pretty quick win here for uh, Jiggly Dreams. Good, good game one. Very good game one. Coming out and being able to pick up a game over the undefeated Zeno Verto. Yeah. So let's see. Let's see if uh, either of these players change up their change up their ideas for going into game two. What do, What do you envision going into game two? Uh, I expect Torque at to uh, stay on the bench here because it looked like uh, Zeno had a bunch of special attackers outside of the Defiant uh, by Sharp, so I don't expect anything really to change on our side for Jiggly Dreams. The, t the four you brought was a very solid four. I agree. I, I, um, I like the four we brought. Like you said, Torcat doesn't really do anything when it's lining up against special attackers and Defiant Mons, so that doesn't particularly do anything. We have fire coverage for the by Sharp, but... It seems like we don't really need to care about this by sharp anyway. We got ground coverage like attached to two different mons as well, so it's not super duper important. On Zeno's side, though, I'm expecting a probably a complete 180 here. Um, I don't, I don't want the Mantine, especially in the face of this Choice Scarf Rotom. Um, I could see. I don't know if we want the Rotom either, like because we don't have. If, if it is a, like, support Rotom, I could be all for it. Going for, like, a, a Will-O-Wisp and mm -hmm. this Hex Source immediately, I, I think would be great. Being able to just, like, neuter it before it's a problem, I think would be fantastic. Yeah. Looks like we are going to get that same lead of Gothitelle, Hex Source. Should be the same four. I, like, I, I would believe change anything the same yet. four. I don't really see any particular reason to bring the Aromatease either. It doesn't particularly line up well against really anything here. Okay, so it looks like we're gonna bring this Torcat, which I we I mentioned don't we don't really I don't, need it. I don't agree with. It lines up well against exactly Cinderace. Yeah, and it doesn't even it doesn't really do anything there because like the Cinderace seems to be more supporting. Exactly. Granted, we saw it for literally one turn. Uh huh. So we don't know exactly what the rest of the set is, but if it is a helping hand like support style set from Cinderace, so that would be very interesting. I think had we seen a Shadow Ball from Gengar on turn one into the Gothitelle, that game could have been different. Oh, that game would have been much different. That that helping hand uh, Shadow Ball would have okayed that uh, Gothitelle. For oh, sure. for sure. Like we saw how much the, the Sludge Bomb did. Like, there, there's no reason that a super effective Shadow Ball wouldn't pick up the KO. This White Herb. Okay, so, so it, Torcat so does Torcat actual does nothing. Actually nothing. Noted. Torcat does literal nothing being being on the lead against Cinderace. So, do we... 
I, I don't dislike going big with Hexers here. Um, I think if we do... Just repeat the last time. I, I think so. I think I just want to Cinderace. immediately get rid of the Cinderace before it does anything. And I... Got a parting shot on the Cinderace. Well, we know... We know Hexorus is faster than Torque. Oh, we're going big. Is this going to be the Gengar or the Cinderace, though? Because that uh, could be very... I believe it's the Cinderace. That's a Pokeball. Oh, no, it's the Gengar. Ooh! Okay. So Pokeball Gengar. Gengar. So we're going big Gengar here, and... I wonder how much this Max Ooze... If it's this, helping hand this Max helping Ooze... Hand Max Ooze is going to do... It's going to do a lot to this Hexorus. Hexorus is another one that's not really known for its bulk. No. The whole point of Haxorus, like, especially in, like, singles, is just, like, Dragon Dance, Dragon Dance, Dragon Dance, set up on a Pokemon that can't really hurt you that bad, and then... Whew. What is Haxorus carrying? Is it AV? Uh, like, this Haxorus. I think this Haxorus is AV. Like, I know it has four attacking moves. Gonna see the Helping Hand go into the, the Gengar one more time. Oh, oh God! It gets dazzling gleam. Oh, that is that is way that's way gone. Yeah, I, we hidden information there. We didn't see anything but Sludge Bomb game one. So going big on Haxorus game two almost guarantees that mm -hmm. Zeno can just max Starfall. The Especially Haxorus. because we know the Gengar is faster. Yeah, like that that lined up very very well for us. And now we're parting shot into the support Cinderace, which like who cares? You know, like. Sure, you lowered our attacks, but it doesn't really do anything when you have a real big Gengar on the other side. Yeah, here. a real big special attacker sitting across from you. So, I can see bringing in Rotom and then bringing back out Torakat one more time as yeah, well. Yeah, getting that actual Intimidate off on the Incinerace would be important. I don't know if you noticed, uh, but their Rotom is marked. Interesting. Yep, it's Rotom the Arrogant. Ah, <laughs> my, uh, my, I have a Hydreigon that is Hydreigon the Sociable. <laughs> I caught it on Kayla's account. Have not found a marked, marked Pokemon on my account yet, though. I, I don't catch enough. I, I breed. I don't catch enough to be able to to uh, get marks. I need to get my mark charm still. I do, too. I haven't completed my decks, which that was going to be on the bucket list to do this past week, but uh, instead I'm still hunting this shiny Oddish. It, it, dude, it, I swear it doesn't exist. <laughs> Going for the helping hand again. This, uh, this I don't expect Rotom to survive much longer. That really didn't do much either. This Max Ooze is really going to hurt this Rotom. Yeah, this Rotom's gone. <laughs> I, I think this game is almost all... Uh, it is all but over. It is very firmly in Zeno's hands here to win the game here. Because if this if this Cinderace has Pyroball, that Excavalier is just going to look at it. Like yeah. It's it's not gonna take that well. And like Gengar lives this iron head. So now you get to bring out your Torcat again. Try to get the intimidate get the intimidate on the uh on the Cinderace here so Pyroball doesn't do as much, but I looking looking forward to game three, I don't think there's any reason to bring this Torcat. Especially no, now that we're we'll, you know it's white herb. Yeah, there's, there's no, reason. no reason. So we drill run or I, I like going for the Protect. We ha almost have to, right? And then trying to take up the Gengar with our uh, Torcat. Uh, man, going for an Overheat here, though, does not feel good when that's our last Mon. We're hoping, yes, like, if we get rid of this Gengar, Escavalier can hopefully clean house here. The big problem is the Cinderace. The Cinderace. Is sitting across like, I don't think Gengar is the problem here. I think it's the Cinderace. Well, Gengar is plus one special attack and is very big. <laughs> Gengar will do a lot of damage if allowed to. Well, for a Max Phantasm into the Excavalier, not going to do really any damage. With with Protect up, it's, it wasn't going to do a whole lot to begin with. Especially since it is it is resisted, right? No, it's not. No, it's not. Ghost stopped. Well, Steel stopped resisting Ghost. We are Flare Blitz instead of Pyro Ball. Interesting. Xeno probably does not like missing. We missed the uh, Overheat. That, I... I I think that in and of itself sealed this game. Oh, yeah. That means the game is 100% sealed up. Like, we have to go for Drill Run. We have to, like, try to hit this overheat. If this if this Drill Run hits, we're... If, if we live to hit this Drill Run... Yeah. 
I think we're in a very good position, but I don't think that's even going to be a possibility. No. Maybe we want Aromatis instead of Excavalier. Knowing what we know now, for sure. Sledge Bomb into the Torcat does a bunch. That does do a bunch. So the Cinderace is minus one, but it doesn't matter. That's four times weak. Yeah, so. four, four times weak with Stab is just... This game is all but over at this point. Um... I'm not going to lie, I was kind of hoping we would miss the overheat again. <laughs> just to, like, just really put the nail in the coffin. Cursed body has been revealed. Well, now, yeah. now this game is over. <laughs> you, yeah. It would have been better if you missed. <laughs> yeah, you wanted to miss that one. Uh, so now we, we can kind of see what uh, Zeno brought in the back here. We never even really got to... I wonder if he brought the same four or, like, the same three in a different one. Yeah, brought the Clefairy again. Which I'm not I'm not surprised about. I think Clefairy lines up pretty well against what we saw. Um, notably, I don't think we're gonna top this Clefairy. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure, man. We're gonna top this Cle Clefairy. Hope our overheat disable runs out soon. Um, I think. And hope Cinderace misses. <laughs> I think seeing how this game went, I don't. I think I want to lead on Haxorus. No. no. Now knowing that Gengar is faster than you and has a fairy type move attached to it, Haxorus is probably not the uh, mon you want to be. I think Gengar is the biggest threat. Yep. So probably bringing... Um, you can't even really bring Gothitelle. You, you, I was going to say, you can't bring Gothitelle. You you're too bring, slow. You can't bring a Scavalier in because a Scavalier is just going to get eaten by the Cinderace sitting across from you. So that leads... That leaves us with Torcat, so, which doesn't do anything. So you can do Torcat, like Rotom, and like maybe parting Thund shot on the Gengar, and like maybe Thunderwave the Gengar to like slow it down. I, I don't hate Thunderwave. <sighs> okay, so if we lead Haxorus Rotom, we are faster than the Gengar, so we can Thunderwave Thunderwave it. Air balloon. Oh yeah. We we can't. <laughs> so if we lead if we lead Gothitelle Rotom, we can Thunder Wave and then Psy Shock. I don't know how much how much that's going to do. Uh, we just pray that Gengar is just paralyzed because we we can we know yeah, it's, we know it's pretty close to a two shot. That's real risky. Uh, this Aromatis. We haven't seen it. We we don't know what's on this Aromatis. No. Uh. Notably, we've only seen two things out of the Cinderace too. We yeah. have Helping Hand and Flare Blitz. Blitz, and that's it. Yeah, so if like if there's an Iron Head hiding on that uh, Cinderace, this poor Aromatis is in trouble after it eats the berry. Looks like we're going for the Gothitelle Haxorus lead again. Going for the four originals, maybe, that uh, helped us win game one. It does look like that. Hoping that Xeno kind of over-adapts, maybe. I could see... Um, Okay, so I think this lead is fine because we're going to trap the Gengar in. Yep. And we can... They are going to anticipate Haxorus going big. So we can switch out into the Excavalier. And it, the problem is, is like, then the Gothitelle just gets ate up. We also have ally switch on the Gothitelle. Which they know about. Yep. So do we play around... Do, Do we, we play, play around the ally switch? Is the mind what's the mind game here? Because I, I know how I play with I play around when I know with uh, ally switches on my opponent's side, and I have used the heck out of it. When I am playing with it, oh, I'll play mind games all day. When I'm playing against it, I just ignore it. Just like it just Hexer is awesome. awesome. Hexer's the grumpy. <laughs> Very fitting for Hexer. He is not a well. She is not a happy. Happy Camper. Mold Breaker does ignore items, right? I don't know the answer to that. I think, I think it, it just ignores abilities. Yeah. So it looks like we're swapping out and setting up Trick Room. We're going for slow mode here. Which, if so... Oh, I don't, I don't know how... I. So this Gengar is likely... Maybe like dazzling gleam or going big max star falling into the Haxorus spot because we've been we, we went big Haxorus almost every time right for sure we we've done it both both games turn one 
Um, playing Zeno in the semi in the quarterfinals, there, uh, I noticed that in game three, I was able to like, he's very like he's very good at reading patterns. He reads patterns very well, and then you, if you're able to do like what I do and play around those said patterns and change it up on him, like Jiggly is doing here, you can once in a while get him. And there goes mm, I'm. I don't feel good about this game. Nope, this game is pretty much over now. That was our saving grace was we needed the trick room to go off. Um, having being a trick roomer and then uh, not having a good like set of redirections for it isn't probably the best idea. Especially because this Excavalier just doesn't do anything. This against... Excavalier just took half its damn pretty much half its health from an iron head. <laughs> Which it resists. <laughs> it was a critical hit. But, but still. it still resists. <laughs> uh, so now the game plan is to probably just thunder wave everything, everything, and just. So hope the you big survive. problem is, is this Cinderace deals with both of these mons. Yep. So we're gonna be faster than the Cinderace. Maybe the play is to ignore the Gengar here. Gengar just blows up our Ojo. With Max Ooze. we can't ignore the Gengar. I was going to deal with the Cinderace uh, because we can paralyze it. Hope Excavalier is faster. Hits one, whichever one Cinderace hits here, uh, Excavalier would protect. So Excavalier is protected from Cinderace. We're going to be able to Thunder Wave the Gengar here. Nope. Never mind. We missed. Just unlucky. Oh, you. man. Proton oh. survived the Max Phantasm. Going for the defense drop on the uh, Excavalier here to ensure a KO. Which, it already was minus one defense. Yep. Because we saw the Max Phantasm last turn, which... Oh, man, this is just... Just beat him up. Yep, we are just taking out the Rotom here, which that was our last form of speed control. And unfortunately, it, this this Axorus in the back is just not going to be able to... Axorus is Expert Belt. Oh, Expert Belt. Interesting. I wonder if we were if we were Assault Vest, this Gengar wouldn't probably be as big a problem. It probably would be. Hexor still does not have bulk. The The big problem here is this Gengar is just going to be able to pick up the KO this turn. Like, going big doesn't do anything here. And I wonder if going big on a Scavalier because he's expecting Hexor to go big would be the better play. And just... Taking out the Cinderace here. Okay. I, I don't hate it. Like, we've seen Iron Head and we've seen Pyro Ball, so Draw Run hits both of those super effectively. So if they go for a helping hand, then like, you're not hitting super effectively, but you're still doing good damage. Yep. Which, looks like we're just going for a double protect to try and wait out the Gengar's big turn. I, I, I like the line of Excavalier going big, just to try to deal with something. I mean, after, after game one went so well, it's just... It really does seem like Xeno is able to adapt and overcome the, the, the basically the presence of this Haxorus. Yeah. Being able to um, hold that information of Gleam was critically important. We're going to lose our Escavalier here. And I don't think this Haxorus can 1v4. I believe we went for... Max Wormwind into the Gengar who used Max Guard. It was into the Gengar? Yep. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Had it been into the Cinderace, I think we could... Pr probably still don't... Aren't able to, to pull this out because Gleam's going to be real effective because you're the last Mon. Yep. But we can also... We're, we're going to take one Gleam here probably and then Cinderace is going to try to clean up house. Uh, I don't know if Clefairy even has a damaging move on it. There's a chance it doesn't. Uh, that's the normal build is just all support moves, and then once in a while you drop after you for Moonblast. I don't hate going for something like uh, Steel Spike into the Cinderace, just to try to get a defense boost to deal with it. Yeah. But it doesn't do anything against... Ah. Helping Hand. Perish Song. So th that seals the game. Um, we have three turns to deal with. One, two, three mons. Three mons now. But we also have... Um, actually, 
There, there is a chance. technically a chance. We because have one turn of Dynamax can, left. We have one turn of Dynamax left. We can KO... I wonder if going for Gleam there was just better. I don't know. Helping Hand Gleam might have KO'd. It, it would have definitely done a lot. Yep. But we also weren't plus one. So we see Rotom Wash here. I don't know if we have a good way... We don't have a good way. Max Wormwind is probably your best bet of KO in this Rotom. And then Rotom just hits Protect and doesn't go down. Mm-hmm. I like going into the Cinderace this turn. I was uh, about to say, Max Knuckle into the Cinderace wouldn't be a terrible idea. Just because... Okay, going for the Clefairy. Did we Steel Spike into that slot? Uh, I, for this exact reason, because the Rotom can Protect this turn. Yep. Which, if we read it right... Which we weren't went into the Rotom, so yeah, that that this, seals this, this seals game. the game over. The game's over. Now. Had we had we steel spiked into the Clefairy, I think there was a chance. Like say, had we predicted the swap and steel spiked into Clefairy and took out the Clefairy that turn, let Rotom be by himself, uh, there was a chance we could have easily just taken out the Rotom, taken out the uh, taken out the Cinderace. Yep, we hadn't seen Protect on the Cinderace, correct? No. But now this game is pretty much locked up. There is no way to deal with three mons in two turns with this set. So, nope. No breaking swipes, which won't hit Clefairy anyway. Uh, Clefairy's going to just hit follow me, probably. We're just swapping in and out now. Yeah. My, at this point, you might as well. Like, th this game is over, so... Clefairy has Protect up, which... So that kind of confirms that Clefairy is the four non-moves set. Interesting to see that we have a Dragon Claw and not, like, Outrage. Outrage is specifically for the reason that Clefairy is sitting across from you. That's true. Uh, you don't get to pick your target, so Clefairy true. was just and Togekiss and you know just all the all the redirection mons that are yep. incidentally also fairies. Yep. I but if we're if we're Dynamaxing, <laughs> are we gonna Moonblast this this Haxorus on his last turn of life? This would be hilarious if this is the case. <laughs> helping hand, helping hand. That's even better. <laughs> Land of the Iron Tail. So, so, Steel Spike probably would have been enough to pick up the KO yeah, on the Clefairy sure. then. If that's if that's how much just Iron Tail did, Steel Spike would have been enough for sure. So, had we had we Steel Spiked into the Clefairy, um, the Cinderace then comes out, which we hadn't seen Protect on it yet. So, we could then be able to uh, deal with, hopefully, the Rotom that turn, anticipating that they don't get the double Protect. And then, from there, just being able to deal with the the Cinderace in the last turn, there there was a chance. Yep. Had you, there was definitely an option if you just had you big brain played and anticipated the switch into the Clefairy, which granted, that's I, hard. I didn't read until it happened, and then you're like, oh hey, you could do this, and that would happen. Um, I also I also think that like looking at Game two. Game two was very well played on on Zeno's part. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, being able to just come out, adapt to the Hexorus, know that you're faster than it, and just it could be Calc that just it, it. Pretty sure that's just an Elko of helping hand Max Star. Yeah. that's going to be there, guaranteed Elko. Like ninety nine percent. Like I'm ninety nine percent sure that's a hundred percent correct. Yeah. So the the uh, adaption to dealing with the Hexorus in game two, and then game three, not being able to ever adapt to dealing with the Gengar was the downfall. Yeah. There was no good way to deal with Gengar on his team to begin with. Um, like, Torakat, I don't think Torakat gets any dark type moves until it evolved into Incineroar. Did we get Lash Out? I don't know. That's, that's the best I got. Uh... I don't know if we get bite or anything like that, but that would we probably probably get bite or crunch. Be something to look into at one point just to see. I also don't think like you need it on Torcat. Like specifically I'm just trying to think of like other places where he could have coverage for a gang for the Gengar for a ghost type. Uh, but I don't know if he ever had if Zeno had ever brought Gengar at all during the I hadn't game. I hadn't seen it or Mantine. Uh, I didn't see it in mine, so I saw Mantine. Mantine was fun to play around. Really? Yeah. With a tor with a colossal. I had specifically brought a physical colossal that game. Gotcha. And that one was fun. It's just like vocal with you. <laughs> Please go away. <laughs> just go away. <laughs> so yeah, I think that is gonna do it this week. 
Uh, congrats to Xenovoto, our first season winner of Draft League. Ten dollar uh, card coming your we way. We have a yeah, a ten dollar Nintendo gift card coming your way. So congrats. Uh, Jiggly Dreams, congrats on the fantastic finish this season. I am really, really looking forward to getting Season 2 of Draft League up and running and actually actually having a good season. With so, all the new bonds, too. For sure. And I I, I really can't over overstress how excited I am for new bonds. Oh, yeah. So. Uh, it's been it's been very stale. <laughs> so I, I haven't played Series 4 at all. I haven't. Nope. Not even going to touch it. Granted, you, you kind of stopped midway through Series 3, too. Well, you know, life life happens, man. Yeah. So, that being said, everybody, thank you very much for lo- watching this week. We will be back in a few weeks, most likely with some more Draft League content. Have a good one. Peace. Peace.